This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. This is a very special episode of the Dean Show. We're here in Texas, that's right, y'all, <laughs> with a live studio audience. And we're going to get everybody involved. You can get involved from your house. You can get involved with your family, sit around the TV and enjoy this week's show because we have a special guest, David Gullion, who comes from a background of Baptist missionaries, 50 years in the making. He accepted Islam and he's here to tell us his story on The Dean Show. We'll be right back. This is The Dean, The Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean. This is the Dean Show. 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 This is the Dean. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. Mr. David Gullion. Gullion. I'm going to start off with peace as we do as Muslims. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum as -salam. Peace be with you. How are you, sir? Fine, alhamdulillah. Now, I'm very honored to have you on our show. Thank you. Now, we, we get a lot of special guests like yourself, people, you know, we, we interview from all walks of life. You know, you, you seem like someone, you know, uh, when you look at you, you know, somebody who, who's just a, uh, an American and people are looking like, man, is this the FBI or something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you know uh, the chemistry teacher you, you just you know somebody from from the outside is looking in it's like man this, this is not a Muslim you know because they think Muslim you know uh, Arab Pakistani what happened here uh, uh, basically uh, when I uh, came to the point that I investigated Islam uh, I felt that uh, based on what I knew I was forced or compelled to become Muslim uh, By the sword? No, simply uh, forced to become Muslim because uh, it was uh, the uh, correct religion or the right belief. Okay, so tell us a little bit about your history. You heard me mention in the beginning that 50 years of Baptist missionaries? Yes, my uh, parents, uh, they're now uh, deceased. They were Baptist missionaries in the Philippines for uh, 50 years. My uh, father was a soldier in the U.S. Army in World War II. And following the Second World War, he went back. Um, even as a young person, um, I came to realize that there was a difference between the uh, Jesus of faith and what must have been the person of history. And it wasn't until I began investigating Islam that I began to make sense of who Jesus was. Okay. And uh, doing this, investigating, uh, uh, say, using the Bible, I eventually became Muslim. Yes. What year was this at? This was in uh, March of 96. 96. Right. And uh, what happened was uh, Dr. Uh, Alam invited uh, me to uh, talk to him in the Abu Bakr Mosque uh, uh, here in Houston. And uh, I went, and I really wasn't that interested. Um, in fact, the only question I asked him the whole time that uh, he was there, uh, that I was talking to him or that we were visiting with him, was I asked him, says, is Prophet Muhammad the prophet as you would find in, you know, the Bible? And he said, yes. Well, in my opinion, I didn't think uh, that he was, but I was going to investigate because now I had all that I needed to make an investigation. So I, I simply went home, uh, uh, got out my uh, Old Testament, and I, uh, ran down the different proofs listed in the Old Testament as to what defines a prophet as they are uh, defined in the Old Testament. Then I went out to make an investigation of Prophet Muhammad, and uh, to my great surprise, he fit the criteria. Then I was interested. I had my attention. I got uh, two translations of the Quran, and over a two-week period, I read both of them. I read one translation and the other one, and I felt a strong compulsion, uh, you know, to become a Muslim. But I did not want to become a Muslim. I uh, said to myself, if I can find just one good reason not to become a Muslim, I will not become a Muslim. And so uh, I spent three months trying to find some good reason not to become a Muslim. But based on what I know, I felt that I had to become a Muslim. And so that's why I'm a Muslim. Do you get sometimes people 
reacting in a way like when, when you tell them you're Muslim, what kind of responses do you get? You say, come on, you're kidding me. You so, uh, no, uh, quite often uh, they uh, might uh, uh, think that it's unusual. They think it's unusual? Yeah, to be a Muslim. Yeah. And I just simply uh, tell them that uh, essentially uh, what uh, uh, Islam teaches and what all the prophets taught was make God central to your life, and then you either show or you prove it by taking care of your fellow human being. And if you uh, say, for instance, check out the Gospels and the New Testament, you'll see that essentially uh, in uh, wherever your different portions that you look, Jesus told people to love God, fear God, obey God. Add them all together, they mean uh, they essentially add up to uh, making God central to your life. And, and then you are to show or prove that this is so by, by uh, taking care of your fellow creature. And Islam does the same thing. If you go to the mosque, listen to the Imam and see if essentially what he, the message that he gives, you know, uh, Friday after Friday is make God central to your life and take care of your fellow creature. Why do you think this is? Usually when we explain Islam, without even saying Islam, when we explain the tenets of Islam, that Islam calls you to worship none but the Creator, to set up no partners with Him, only, like you said, make that the central key point in all your worship, only God, and to believe in all the messengers of God, and the day of judgment, accountability, and to establish a good character in your life, to do good. You know, people are like, they, they can relate to this, but as soon as you put Islam in front of it, there's a problem. Why do, why do you think this is? It's simply because I would, because uh, they would associate the word Islam with something being different or foreign. Uh, but in effect, uh, the word simply uh, ultimately means submission to God, which is what Christianity and, uh, say, Judaism teach, is that you should submit to God. Tell us, what would you do? How would your response be? We, we've seen some in, in the media. Uh, you know, you're coming out of a, a mosque or a masjid or an event and, you know, a... a uh, family gathering and then outside of the mosque you, you had someone uh, holding a, a sign saying uh, go back home How would you respond to this? Uh, if I go back home, I go to Houston, because Houston's my <laughs> home. I was uh, born here in Texas, so if I go back home, that's where I go back home. Yeah. And uh, submission to God is a universal message, so wherever a, a person lives or a creature lives, that's their home. Yeah. And in other words, uh, submission to God is something that should be done regardless of where a person is. How's your relationship with Jesus now as opposed to then? Uh, if you read the New Testament and you simply don't know what's going on, you find a character who you believe intended good, but is very mixed up. Mm -hmm. And that would be the view of uh, Jesus. Now, 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 now with Islam, uh, you can uh, then understand what Jesus was about, which was uh, essentially uh, he believed that uh, it was his role from God to uh, show Israel how to be the example for the world to follow in submission to God and take care, and care of their fellow creature. Mm -hmm. And um, eventually uh, when uh, he felt that he was rejected by Israel, uh, if you check, say for instance, Matthew 21:43, uh, he told uh, the leaders of the uh, you know, Jewish community that the kingdom of God would be taken from them and given to uh, another nation or uh, uh, or a community that would in fact do what they were told to do. Mm -hmm. And then, for instance, if you check uh, John, you'll see that there was 
to come a comforter uh, who would uh, be a perfect guide. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of Christians, for instance, uh, might uh, say that this refers to God the Holy Spirit, but then again, if you check the same source, you see that this comforter had to be told what to do. In other words, he didn't speak of himself, he spoke of what someone else told him. In other words, it could hardly be a God who doesn't know what to say or has to have someone tell him what to say. You've written a book called The Last Christian. Yes. What's this book primarily focus on? Okay, uh, it, uh, it is in, the theme that it is involved in is trying to differentiate the Jesus of history, the person who actually walked the earth, and the Jesus of faith. Uh, the first half of the book is largely concerned with trying to uh, explore how the Jesus of uh, faith came to be. The second half is trying to put together uh, the Jesus of history. The book is called The Last Christian because uh, Jesus, the historical character, you know, uh, is not the same as uh, the Jesus of faith. So in that sense, he's the last Christian. Also, a problem you have in trying to reconstruct the historical Jesus is you can find indications or you can find things that indicate what the historical character was, but very often you can say, well, I know I got something here, but it's hard for me to say how firm it is. So it'd be much like you're building a structure or a house where you say, well, I know I got a piece of straw here, this piece of wood. I even think I have a board here. And, that's a, and in that sense, Jesus is the last Christian because you can't completely reconstruct the historical Jesus. Now, what you do find is that all the indications of the historical Jesus do not conform with the Jesus of uh, faith. You know. Amazing. We're going we're to take a break, and then we're going to take some questions from our live audience when we come back. Okay. We'll be right back here with more here on The Dean Show. And with good deeds, uh, we'll find that good breeds good. Clear out your mind and your heart of hatred mm -hmm. and preconceived notions of racism and nationalism because you cannot have anything inside of you that's like that against people and still be successful with them. Welcome back to The Dean Show, and we're here with the author of The Last Christian, David. Yes. Mr. David, thank you again for being with us. We're going to go ahead. We're here in Texas, y'all, and we're going to go ahead and uh, get some questions from the live studio audience here on The Dean Show. Follow me. All right. It's not the Oprah show. This is the Gene show. And we have our brother Mujahid. Please step up here. Got a question for David? Uh, yes, David. Assalamu alaikum. <clears throat> um, within the 50 years, as I, as I hear, you have uh, extensive history in regards to speaking to people about God and the message of God. How did that differ whenever you embraced Islam? Um, it's very rare that we actually see Muslims going to places and, you know, knocking on people's doors or kind of doing the sort of kind of evangelical work, let's say. Uh, do you find that it's a bit different now to talk about God or the format and not necessarily going to the people maybe like you had in the past? How, how, how did that change? How do you deal with that now? A, a big difference. If uh, you're going to be like a Christian uh, missionary or a preacher and that, that sort of thing, when you talk about God, you're primarily talking to people because you want to get them into heaven, because you want them to believe in uh, the divine sacrifice of God's divine Son. When you're talking to people in Islam, you're trying to uh, tell them the message of all the prophets, which is also the message of uh, Jesus that... Uh, they should make God central to their life, and they should show or prove it by taking care of their fellow human being. And you would then, uh, uh, when you uh, talk about Islam, you would simply tell them that essentially what you have in Islam is you have a tried and proven living community that has done just that, that has a record of how to do that. And uh, that is what you speak about when you speak about Islam. Thank you. We're going to go move on to the next question. Young, young, young brother, please come up, step up here, and go ahead and ask your question to uh, David. Go ahead. All right. Assalamu alaikum. Um, I heard there is an Old Testament uh, recording that says to tell, a, to be able to distinguish a, a true prophet and a false prophet, and uh, that a false prophet or will be the one who tells false prophecies. They prophesy about something that doesn't come true. Now, um, so we have this issue or this conflict of the teachings of Paul 
and Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Um, what are some of the prophecies of Paul, and did they come true? Okay, uh, <clears throat> essentially, uh, uh, at some time during Jesus' uh, time on earth, his ministry, he came to the conclusion that Israel was not going to accept him as their Messiah. And he then said, according to, uh, say, Matthew 21, 43, that God's kingdom would be taken from Israel and would be given to another nation or another community that, in fact, would do what they're told to do. Now, uh, Paul, who uh, would either, was either uh, who was a Jewish scholar uh, or a partisan or a zealot, this didn't go down very well with him. Uh, uh, according to the record, as one finds it in the New Testament, he first was a persecutor of people who followed Jesus, then uh, he had a nervous breakdown. And after his nervous breakdown, he said that Jesus came to him in a series of visions and dreams, and he told them, you know, uh, his message. And you find that in this message, uh, you have a different Jesus from uh, all the indications of the Jesus who uh, actually walked the earth. Now, Paul, the thing to remember about Paul is that Paul said that everything he taught or preached or believed or said or did came from Jesus. Now, uh, uh, in two occasions, uh, for example, the uh, book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, Paul uh, tells the people that Jesus' time when he's going to be coming back is so short, it doesn't matter that if they uh, rejoice, don't rejoice, marry, marry or don't marry, uh, buy or, or don't buy, it doesn't matter. Now, this was 1,900 years ago. This didn't happen. You'll find in the fourth chapter of uh, 1 Thessalonians that he was telling his audience, the people from Thessaly, that before everybody there was dead, Jesus was coming back. This didn't happen. Now, remember, he said that Jesus told him everything that would happen in the future. And uh, Paul certainly at some time during his lifetime believed that Jesus was God. So Paul was saying that God told him this and that it didn't happen. So either you should believe God told him this, or that is Paul making a mistake. And uh, where this is a test of a prophet is uh, you'll find uh, in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 18, it says that a prophet, if he, if he speaks in the name of God and he tells you something's going to happen and doesn't happen, it's a, it's a false prophet giving a false prophecy and don't listen to him. Here in Texas, thank you very much. And we're going to go to the next. We have time for one more question. Young man, young man, please come up and ask your question. Wait, hold on. Before you start, see, we're in Texas. I haven't heard nobody say y'all. <laughs> no, it don't happen. Go ahead. <laughs> How you doing? No. <laughs> yes, um, you mentioned earlier that some people may see throughout your, your time as a Muslim that people have seen Islam to be foreign. What are some things that you think that practices that Muslims, Muslims can undergo in order to eliminate that? Or what have you seen through your lifestyle that Muslims have practiced or that the perception have been from non-Muslims concerning this? Okay, uh, the question of perception is you, uh, you, you have a community that is distinct or different and Muslims uh, should just simply concentrate on being, if they're distinct or different, and being distinct or different in a good way, which is what Muslims are supposed to do. They're supposed to make God central to their life and take care of their fellow human being. And as long as they practice that, they're fine. Thank you very much. And that is it for now. We're going to take a break and we're going to be back with more here live. The Dean Show in Texas. Y'all sit tight. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone If a lies by my side I am not afraid to stand alone I am not afraid to stand alone If a lies by my side I am not afraid to stand alone And if we're going to worship something, I figured I might as well worship the Creator instead of any of the creations. Now, in, upon investigating all the religions, I remember finding out the meaning of what Islam is, what a Muslim is. Those who surrender their self to God is a Muslim. Those who surrender, submit to God, God's will. That is it. Islam was pure. It was just, you just pray to God, your Creator.
back here on the Dean Show live in Texas, and we're here with David, the author of The Last Christian. We have a few more minutes okay. before the show comes to a end, and I have just a few more points I want to cover. Did you get a chance to watch these Senate hearings with the Pepe King, Peter King? Uh, only for a few minutes. Yeah. Uh, I really didn't get to watch that much of it. They were coming together discussing the radicalization of youth. So basically when you see some of the politicians who are really supposed to be working to create understanding you know, between the people, bringing people together, but we really want the politicians and people out there to understand us better because maybe they have good intentions, but they, they're mis misunderstanding us. Okay, so, here's, here's what, I, or what I would say. Yeah. Uh, the question is about whether Muslims are or not good citizens. The Constitution defines what a good citizen is. In the preamble it says, we the people of the United States in order to form a more perfect union, to establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, to provide for the common defense, to promote the general welfare, to uh, uh, secure for ourselves and our posterity the blessings of liberties, do establish and ordain this Constitution of the United States. Any Muslim that can say that is a good Muslim. And most Muslims can say that. Most Muslims will embrace that. Most Muslims are good Americans. That's right. I like that. MashaAllah. So before we come to an end, tell us now where can people, if they want to read your book, The Last Christian, where can they get this? Okay. Uh, 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 simply remember the title, Last Christian. Go online. You can go to either uh, Amazon.com or Barnes & Noble. The People who uh, actually publish this book are Author House, like I'm the author and I live in a house. Author House, go online, they sell the book as well. They also sell it as an e-book. Hopefully a Texas company, Texas Global Traders, will also soon be selling the book. Uh, but uh, remember my name, David Gullion, and the title, Last Christian, and you can simply buy it online. That'd be the quickest, easiest way to do it. I'd like to thank you and any closing comments for those who are out there and the way of life that they're living, they're not happy with it. It's confusing. And, and they want to step out of the confusion, and they're just a little bit timid, you know? Culture class, sometimes they see Muslims as people who they, they just can't identify with, but they can identify with Islam. What advice do you have for them? Uh, Islam, if it's practiced the way it's supposed to be, means peace. It also means the best form of life. In other words, if a person makes God the center of their life, and by doing so they take care of their fellow human being they make the world a better place and that is what Islam is all about thank you very much thank you very much may God Almighty the Creator reward you for being with us thank you so much and thank you again for tuning in to another episode of the Dean Show you might not like spicy food neither do I you might not like dressing a certain way you like dressing your way as long as it's in a modest way don't worry about it you can do it in Islam, it's all good as long as it's pleasing to the creator of the heavens and the earth. And as you heard our guest say, making God the central point in your life, just worshiping God, not worshiping Jesus, not worshiping statues, icons, idols, monkeys, elephants, none of these things. Only worshiping the creator and doing good, doing good to your neighbor, doing good to your parents, doing good to your fellow brothers and sisters in humanity. This is what Islam is about. And you met an American. You met an American, we've interviewed Romanians, Hispanics. Islam is the fastest growing way of life in the world. And thank you for coming to the source to learn about the most misunderstood yet fastest growing way of life in the world, Islam, practiced by over 1.5 billion. And you could be a Muslim too. You can be a Muslim too because a Muslim is simply one who takes that free choice that they have of either submitting to the creation of God or submitting to God. And you know what the right thing to do is. Submit to the one Jesus submitted to. That's the one God, the one creator. And do good deeds, do righteousness. And this is what Islam is calling you to. Get a free copy of the Quran. Call the number on the screen, 1-800-662-ISLAM. Read the verbatim word of God. And continue to come back here to the Dean Show. Until next time, we, started with peace, we end with peace. Peace be unto you. Assalamu alaikum. Come and see what everyone's talking about. If you find one contradiction, it can't be from God. But the rational idea, the rational explanation is, you do your best. Give up for spring God as one. I will never give up spreading this message. I hope that you take that necessary step. You don't know if you're going to live till tomorrow.
So you gotta find that urgency to do the right thing right now. If you say that you do not believe in Jesus, you have stepped outside of Islam. You cannot be a Muslim. It is attended our faith to. It's cold, it's late, everybody's sleeping. I arise and ask Allah to forgive me. Oh Allah, you see. Oh Allah, you know all the sins I do. I turn to you to forgive my sins and my heart. I'm your sinful <laughs> وآيات لهم الأرض الميتة أحييناها وأخرجنا منها حبا وأخرجنا منها حبا فمنه يأكلون وجعلنا فيها جنات من نخيل وأعناب فجرنا فيها من العيون ليأكلوا من ثمره وما عملته أيديهم أفلا يشكرون سبحان الذي خلق الأزواج كلها مما تنبت الأرض من لهم الليل نسلخ منه النهار فإذا هم مظلمون والشمس تجري لمستقر لها ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم والقمر قدرناه منازل حتى عاد كالعرجون القديم لا الشمس ينبغي لها أن تدرك القمر ولا الليل سابق النهار وكل في فلك يسبحون